Good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. We will just uh, give another minute for the audience to join us. Um, so please bear with us. We're going to start very, very shortly uh, with the session. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, welcome, everyone, uh, to today's webinar. My name is Lucien Zaborowski. I am the Associate Head of Marketing uh, here at Creatio. And today I will be your host for this fantastic webinar that we have, um, of which the title is How Are Companies of All Sizes Utilizing Low-Code CRM to Unify Sales, Marketing and Service? Real World Use Cases. Uh, as the title suggests, we're going to really focus on on this concept of low-code and low-code CRM, uh, and we're going to really try to focus a lot on on real applications and and how companies uh, in Europe um, and and specifically uh, in the Netherlands uh, region are are using low-code CRM to to scale these functions and unify them. Uh, so we're we're very excited to have you with us, um, and we we have a fantastic agenda for you. So uh, this is this is really about us introducing the fantastic speakers that we have. Uh, which I will just uh, talk about in just a minute and they will introduce themselves. Uh, we will talk about the, the general concept of digital transformation and why now especially is the time to, to keep up with it and, and the changes that are happening in the, in the market overall. Uh, we will talk about low-code CRM and why why it is and can potentially be a solution and, and a help to lots of businesses during this time and beyond, and, and how it can enable businesses to scale digital transformation and accelerate it at the same time. Uh, and then we're gonna uh, focus on the, the fantastic uh, success cases that we have uh, of, of Dutch companies, and, uh, and we're gonna have our fantastic partners, Webrix, discuss those and present those to us. Um, we're gonna talk about the, the creation local platform and just give you an overview of it. Uh, and then we're gonna go into a Q and A. So, uh, the Q&A itself, uh, we will take your questions in the chat, uh, so please do put those in those throughout the, the next uh, 50 minutes or so, uh, and we will try to answer all of them um, at the end. Uh, and if we can get to your questions, we'll be sure to, to write them down and respond to you via email. This session is also recorded, so if you if you cannot stay with us for the whole session, we will also be sure to share it with you uh, over email uh, afterwards. So without without further ado, let me uh, proceed to the introductions of our fantastic speakers, uh, starting with uh, David Amin from uh, uh, our fantastic partner in in the Dutch region, Webrix. Uh, Davy, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and and uh, Webrix. Thank you, Lucian. Um, and hello, everyone. It's great to have you all here today. Um, so as Lucian already said, my name is uh, David Dahmer, uh, currently 40, 41 years old, and I have been working with CRM software for about 18 years now, so time is flying. Um, and although I've worked with other CRM systems before, like Microsoft Dynamics, Salesforce, Edil, and even Goldmine, for those who remember, um, we currently only focus on Creatio to give our customers the best solution for their business. Then a bit about Webrix. Um, Webrix is a partner since 2017, not too long yet, uh, based in the Netherlands and operating internationally. So we do all development in-house. So we develop all integrations and custom software for our customers and other creation partners as well. Although we have done hundreds of CRM projects in our 18 years uh, for Creatio, we're currently working on our 16th project. So that's a bit about me and Webrix, but I'm not alone here today. So let's get to know the rest. Thanks, Davey. Uh, and thanks, Lucian. You, you, you've set the bar high with the fantastic speaker introduction. So uh, my name is Richard Ainley. I'm the EMEA Sales Director for Creatio. Uh, my background is actually engineering. So uh, I understand the other side of the table as well as the dark side of the uh, commercial world. Uh, and I'm super excited to be here today to be able to 
present and talk a little bit about Creatio, the market space, uh, the pandemic and everything that's going on around us. Uh, I've been with the company for a little over a year and we're doing some really exciting things within my region, uh, um, which I'll also touch on in today's uh, presentation. First of all, uh, then to just kind of introduce Creatio, um, we've uh, now just reached a little under uh, 650 employees. We've got five offices around the world, uh, headquartered out of Boston in the US. I'm actually sat in our London office as we speak this morning. Uh, so I have the London office uh, and the London and Western European region uh, within my authority. We're very much growing this organization very rapidly because if there was one word to really sum up Creatio as an organization, it's the word accelerate. We help our clients accelerate their sales, their leads, uh, their service desks. Uh, and as an organization, we, we just have a culture and ethos uh, of moving pretty fast and, and dynamically. We have a very much a, a partner centric approach to the market space where we have now uh, a little over 700 partners in 110 countries. Uh, and what's really interesting about the organization, we're heavily investing in the research and development and the evolution of the product itself. So of those 650 employees, around half of those employees are fully focused in the R&D uh, and developing the platform further. That development has not gone unnoticed uh, by the likes of Forrester and Gartner, some of the analysts uh, around the world who have now recognized uh, Creatio as a leader in many of the different categories uh, across their reports. So uh, I think it's all fair to say that uh, we probably all agree that the need to keep up with digital transformation is absolutely critical to the success of organizations today. But I want to drill into that statement a little bit further and also talk about why it's going to be even more important with the recent times and some of the things that are the challenges that the world's facing right now. But just to kind of bring a little bit more context to kind of why digital transformation is so important uh, and why it's required to help reshape businesses. These are some of the statements from some of those consultants uh, that I'm sure many of us will be familiar with on today's webinar. Uh, just to pull out a couple of those, 68% uh, of business executives say that digital investments lead to an increase in revenue in the last 12 months. I think the one that really stands out for myself is the one from Deloitte uh, with organizations with high digital maturity are now reporting three times higher net revenue growth. So it, it's, it's a fairly um, understood and, and given that digital transformations do reshape businesses. Uh, but what's going to be even more important is, is now what happens and what organizations choose to do in the recent pandemic era. So obviously that the pandemic came earlier this year. I think it, it caught everybody off guard. It turned the world upside down. Uh, and the initial reaction from the market space was very much a knee jerk reaction because nobody really knew what to do. Nobody had planned for this in any shape or form. And it affected just about everybody on, on the planet in, in several different ways. The initial uh, market space that we saw, all of the projects got put on hold. As I said, it was very much a knee-jerk reaction to the uh, initial stages of that pandemic. Uh, and everything from a business perspective kind of disappeared to, to some extent. What we've started to then see is that following that knee-jerk reaction, after around about two to three months, people started to get their heads around the, the, the new world as we knew it. And then what we started to see was, well, the forward thinking organizations out there started to realize that actually, first of all, we need to start innovating because we don't have the tools and the technology in place to deal with this pandemic. Uh, and second of all, in actual fact, a pandemic does also provide opportunity for us to address some of those uh, digital transformation projects 
that perhaps we've not had time to do in the past. And if I put a bit more context into this, um, a great example is service desk and obviously having a telephony desk. Well, many of those people are now working from home. And if the technology wasn't in place, to basically orchestrate this and allow people to still be working from home, managing all of the, the queue desk and everything else that comes with the, the service desk uh, functionality, that, then those organizations were really gonna start finding themselves in trouble. So it, it was quite an um, overwhelming majority uh, that showed that most business executives agree that innovation was absolutely critical, not only to ride uh, and come through the pandemic, but then also to reap the rewards on the backside once we move into the recovery phase. Uh, and then on the flip side to this, only a few executives fe felt that they were actually equipped to face with the challenges that the COVID-19 crisis presents. This next chart from McKenzie and Company then kind of shows that the ones that do invest and the ones that are forward thinking during this pandemic will then come out on the other side in the, the recovery with a 30% advantage in the market space. Uh, and this is whereby those organizations will really start to, to reap the benefits uh, of acting accordingly in these challenging times. So I then want to introduce low-code CRM and low-code technology. I think it's a fairly well-thrown around term these days in today's market space, low-code. It, 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 it says what it is on the tin in terms of it basically provides a software platform where very little coding is required to basically configure the solution. Uh, typically, people also talk about no-code, but if you are doing some fairly sophisticated inf interfacing and other peripheral activity, you will normally need some form of coding. Uh, and if it's a true no-code platform, typically it doesn't have the versatility to be able to address the enterprise needs. Crescio is providing such low-code technology uh, within CRM. Uh, and just to, again, bring a bit more color and context to what is the difference between more of a, an off-the-shelf product or out-of-the-box out of functional CRM compared with a low-code CRM, you can start to see some of the differences. So again, that kind of shift away from manual coding and much more into a drag and drop uh, um, uh, solution architecture uh, has a massive impact on the application delivery. So the lengthy development times and long implementation phases really get uh, kind of shrunk down into much more precise uh, sessions and we have a far higher uh, success rate of delivering those successful projects on time using the low-code approach. Uh, there's another aspect to this uh, in that McKenzie also released a report back in October 2018 which showed that if you empower the people who are using the system with a, a self-serve technology that that project is twice as likely to be more successful. And one of the reasons for this is not only are you empowering the team that's going to be using the system in the development and the implementation of that project, but you also, again, shrink down the implementation times so that they get the right functionality for them in the right time frame. Because what often can happen with these lengthy bespoke coding projects is that the project is delivered with the incorrect functionality sometimes or uh, also a very kind of lag, uh, a lagging time frame for when that functionality is delivered. And again, there's a, a number of other elements uh, that you can see here on the slides talking about solution scope, maintenance, integration, and life, life cycle management. And it all wraps up into driving the user adoption of the platform. So by decreasing the time it takes to implement the solution, by reducing the amount of IT expertise that you need in order to actually go through that implementation process, and then also increasing the user base customer satisfaction, it, it hugely increases 
the user adoption of the platform and how happy people are actually using the system and starting to feel like the system is not hindering them, it's actually helping them in their job roles. And this again, as I said, by using the drag and drop technology and methodology, it increases their productivity, it enhances the reporting and then drives this much higher user adoption, which in, in turn will actually dictate the success of that software project. In terms of uh, what can low code automate? Well, if we look at this from several different perspectives, from workflows and business logic, user interfaces, integration, artificial intelligence and machine learning, these are some of the elements of the platform that we can automate within the low code uh, arena. You can then see that the types of processes and tasks we can cover, project management, time tasks, communication, document management, inventory management, knowledge management, etc. And what this will do is all of these processes and tasks can be built into the system in a unified single interface CRM. And what that will then do across the various different business units across the organization is bring about a single version of the truth. We have something called our 360 degree view within the system which allows for all those different business units to be able to see uh, a single version of the truth of that communication between the client or the organization and each of its clients. And the clients that we have uh, that we serve uh, that are utilizing this low code CRM uh, have really started to reap the benefits of this. Uh, and the ones that really get the best out of the system and the best value and the return on investment are the ones that really start to not only use uh, the Creatio CRM for sales, service, and marketing, but then also start to build out other functions, other business processes to engage with other elements of their organization. But I'm going to hand back over to Davey at this point because I think he's going to introduce some of the uh, business cases and some of the clients that they've actually gone through the implementation with uh, and some of their success stories. Yes, thank you so much, Richard. Um, I've prepared three project cases for today, uh, all from different industries and from different needs to show what Creatio can do as a perfect low-code solution for every industry, I might say. So this first customer case is about the Bayenkorf, which translates to English as the beehive. Um, the Bayenkorf started as a small supply store in 1870 and has now grown into the most successful high-end luxury department store in the Netherlands, with seven flagship stores and currently three web shops, focusing on the Dutch, Belgium and German market. As you can see, they have about 23 million visitors a year in their stores and over 16 million registered customers of which we created a 360 degree profile in Creatio. Um, so we use Creatio to store information such as the personal information, purchase history, transaction information, uh, for example, the bag of credit card holders. Project challenges, of course, there's always a few challenges that make a project interesting. So one of the biggest challenges in this process was the data. To be able to create a single view of the customer, we had to gather, clean up and update data from a different range of systems like um, in-store panels, um, transaction information from the store register and also web shop data, warehouse databases and other data sources. Um, I mean, doing so, we also need to make sure that all the other systems would be up to date and therefore we had to create several web integration services uh, to be able to maintain and keep data clean throughout the whole ecosystem. That means Creatio is handling all the data, is cleaning it up as much as possible with all the processes and then making sure that every other platform they use is also up to date. And by doing this, this will all result into a quick and clean data migration and centralization. So some of the project highlights, uh, that's the fun stuff. Um, we've built a GPDR toolkit, which makes, uh, which allows the back to anonymize personal information 
rather than deleting the information. This way, they do not lose any valuable marketing information. You will still have all your dashboards, all your information correctly. Um, we've also created a real-time assignment of vouchers, gift cards, as well as voucher redemption across mobile apps, web shops, and all payment terminal in the Bay of Course stores. This is all done directly from Creatio. And we also created an automatic deduplication function based on the source channel to keep the data as clean. You can imagine they have a lot of sources where data comes from. So in this automatic deduplication function, we said, okay, if, if the source is the web shop, it's less important with personal data than the credit card, etc. And that's the automatic deduplication based on. A bit of the customer media. So yes, we created a GPDR toolkit with a printable uh, that made it super easy to just print out all the information um, related to the customers. And then they deserve first place in the national GPDR test, which is awesome. That's Bakov. Um, the next case uh, I chose because it's very different from our adverse companies and I love it personally. Um, <laughs> the company is called Stichting Uitgestelde Kinderfeestjes, which uh, translates as Foundation Delayed Children Parties in English. So that is a real jawbreaker. Um, what they do is they organize children's birthday parties, uh, make sure they can invite friends from school and uh, the neighborhood, and they all do this for families who are not capable of throwing a birthday party themselves. So it's a non-profit, and we introduced Creatio in 2018, and they then grew at 230% annually, and were able to service 536 requests and make 425 children very happy in 2020 so far. So the project needs uh, they had is they obviously needed a system that would allow the company to build a complete customer profile and keep track of all its activities. They wanted a highly customizable tool capable capable of delivering solutions to support the organization's unique processes. The GPDR compliant was obviously very, very important to them, also because they're working with children. And they needed a user-friendly interface and easy navigation because they work a lot with volunteers who might just work there for a short period and they don't have a lot of time to get to know a different program. And to make this happen, it's a non-profit. All those people have a full-time job. Next to this, they needed a strong implementation and support from the vendor or partner to just keep this project going. So let's see. Um, I think we went, went too far. Yes. So some of the solutions we created is uh, we created a unified data ecosystem with a complete history of interactions of all the key stakeholders that is including social workers children's parents care providers donators suppliers etc we also have to build a du du deduplication function which focuses not only on duplicate information but also looks at information of when the party was requested so you can have a new request every year without the system immediately finding this a duplicate and re denying your party request. We use data enrichment tools for the complete profile of a party requester, um, which makes sure we have all the correct information about the social workers, care providers, and their requests. Obviously, an inventory management solution to keep track of all the party planning essentials. And we also created a tailor-made task management tool that includes a real-time schedule, of available party locations um, and all the related party activities in a single user interface. And obviously, uh, very important, we also create an integration with the website to streamline party request processing and leverage all the web tracking tools. So we use some low code. Um, we created customized custom guided workflows for the volunteers to manage that end-to-end -end party preparation process. Uh, Creatio will guide them through all the steps and make sure they see all the relevant information they need. 
an effective email communication solution allowing for a combination of automated and personalized email communication with the help of trigger emails and the library of customized email templates because all the communication internally and externally is handled by Creatio and a lot of times just automatically. Create a lot of business rules for um, to automate the party request verification based on preset parameters that would analyze the deadline and notify the request automatically if the time frame is too short. For example, when a quick request is made too late and there will be no time to organize a party uh, for the specific date, the system will automatically reject the request and send out an email with alternatives to the party requested. We have some advanced solutions for activity scheduling and automated email notifications about the request, status updates, changing of party details. So based on the stages, we will notify involved contacts internally and externally about the status of the party location information and the party arrangement. Um, we also rapidly adjusted processes that reflect changes in the organization's activities due to COVID-19. Um, as Richard already mentioned, a lot happened. COVID hit quickly and um, for the sticking out the interfaces, this means that in just, uh, I think it was under four hours, we've adjusted and created new processes and went from uh, throwing children parties on site to sending out uh, party boxes full of toys and, and fun stuff to use to have a party at home. A little fun statement from our customer. And then obviously we have another very interesting different case. And I guess you can see all the cases of them are different. Um, and both the Stichting at Gestaltic Interfaces as this one, the International Patient Center, are totally different from default functions that normal companies might use. So the IPC, International Patient Center, is the lead medical travel company in the Netherlands. So they offer full service support to international patients and referring physicians seeking consultation, second opinion, or medical treatment in the Netherlands. They do that by uh, assisting patients, by uh, giving them travel arrangement, uh, scheduling residents, and giving them access to the Dutch healthcare providers. And to realize all this, they have partnered up with some well known companies such as KLM, Schiphol, and the Erasmus Medical Hospital. They currently offer medical travel from over 18 countries, uh, AT, sorry. Um, and took first place in the Euro Healthcare Consumer Index, second place in the Global Innovation Index of 2018. So a bit about their needs for this project. They needed a single view of patient requests, travels and medical treatments. Of course, a website integration to manage online treatment and request forms, um, the ability to register treatment requests, request medical assessments and requests uh, receive some estimates from the hospitals, the ability to res register the whole patient journey, and the ability to register aftercare, medical hotels, uh, transport, home care, medical supply delivery, etc. So the fun thing about this is we started Creatio when the company started as well. Um, and what you see in this project is that the customer has an idea, this is what we want, we want to store information and together with Creatio and we as a partner, we come up with the best solutions for this company. So we realized a 360 degree treatment profile to keep track of all the detailed information, um, a complete interaction history with all the related information, a full patient's treatment history overview, activity management, including emails, call, task processing, um, they need some powerful dashboard to provide real-time information, insight and data analysis, and custom reporting that has to be sent to the hospital every week. So we obviously, with Creatio, use a lot of low-code solutions. Um, we use out-of-the-box low-code tools and powerful BMM and CMM uh, capabilities to accelerate patient-related workflows. We also created custom workflows um, for the best, best practice business processes to ensure an optimal working environment. And that kind of means that the system will guide, again, the user through all the steps. 
So users don't have to think too much with Creatio. Just follow the steps, get correct information, and you'll be fine. Um, we get, created uh, automation on schedule activities for care coordinators, sending reminders to enhance the workflow efficiency, and send information updates and reminders to patients as well. They also need an integration with the EP to send quotes, invoices, and payment confirmation. So with ERP, uh, we'll allow Creatio to give the correct um, information to ERP and then um, create an invoice. And ERP will return the information of invoice and payment information back to Creatio. So even the users that don't have access to ERP, and it goes for every industry, you always see the latest payment information. So, so far, the customer cases. Um, I guess I'm going to like to hand over the wheel to Richard again and tell us a bit more about Logo. Thanks, Davey. Okay, so um, low code and the CRM overview. So we've kind of touched on some of these points a little bit earlier, but the Creatio solution really comes into its own element uh, with regards to these three categories. We have a very, very powerful business process automation engine, which is at the heart of the Creatio solution. This has a lot of flexibility uh, in terms of the um, what the processes we can create within the system, uh, and we'll touch on this a little bit short shortly on the next slide. We also come to the market space with a, a low-code approach that we've just discussed, and then, as I mentioned earlier, we have a unified CRM that really gives that single version of the truth and that kind of overarching view of the client from unified sales service and marketing and any other functions which are then built in to the platform using the low code technology. The business process automation engine, uh, you can see the diagram on the right hand side on the screen here is showing different elements of the business uh, flow. Uh, the process automation engine can handle uh, sequential business processes, but it does also have something called dynamic case management, which basically allows for more flexibility in the business processes that are implemented in the solution so that they can resonate more with real life situations. Uh, and it's also, again, to kind of prevent users from getting frustrated in the system. Because if you have a, a sequential business process uh, built within the platform and you're forcing somebody to go through all of the steps, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, when the, the user already knows that they can skip to process uh, stage D or, or E, then don't force them to do things that they don't really need to do. Because again, that can get very frustrating for the users uh, and also they can start to disengage with the system. The fully fledged loco platform uh, on the screen here, you can see some of the elements. Uh, these elements down the left hand side toolbar are effectively data points which can be dragged and dropped onto the UI, onto the right hand side of the screen. Uh, and what will then happen is these data points not only get updated in the user interface JavaScript side of the platform, but they're also added to the database. And more importantly, they are then available within all of the business analytics uh, and the powerful um, uh, user interface that's then provided uh, for carving up the data on the analytical side of the platform. We have the best in class unified CRM. Uh, when we talk about this, we're referring to our sales service and marketing functionality. Uh, again, they're kind of out of the box functional modules that are ready to go, but because they're brought about using the low code approach, they're highly configurable uh, and allow for those to be adjusted and configured to suit the individual business requirements. And in some cases, some of our clients actually take these modules and quite drastically change their functional use due to the flexibility that the platform provides. To kind of summarize the, the portfolio, it's Studio Creatio that really is the foundation of our, our solutions. And this is the low code, no code technology stack that allows you to design a business process that can be interfacing with the users as well as system calls to the database 
uh, and things like this in the back end. Uh, and upon that studio platform, we've then developed uh, the best of breed modules for sales, marketing and service. We then also complement these uh, best of breed modules with a marketplace. This marketplace then provides a whole raft of add-ons, connectors and integrations to third party applications, uh, uh, which can then enhance the platform even further. Uh, and we really welcome people to a world where any business idea can be automated in minutes. We want to change the way people think about software. Uh, we believe using the Creatio platform, people can take a business idea and very, very rapidly realize that uh, business idea in our studio uh, environment. It's worth pointing out as well that we, if you go onto the Creatio website, you're able to download Studio Creatio free of charge. Uh, it's just a design studio environment. So you'll be able to design all of your business processes, uh, build up a library of those processes, share ideas within your organization. Uh, and again, hopefully we'll start to help you accelerate uh, your business processes as you go forward. Lucian, do you, want, do you want me to hand over to yourself for the Q&A? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, thank you, Richard. Uh, thank you, Davey, uh, for the fantastic presentation and, and content. Uh, we we actually run through this uh, pretty quickly. So we have uh, as much as 10 minutes uh, for a Q&A, uh, and we have some questions already to to start us going. Um, and I just remind the audience, if you if you have any questions to our speakers, please do put them in the chat, and we'll we'll be sure to address them. We we have time to to talk about them and 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 really have an open discussion. So. Uh, we'd love to get you engaged, and, and if you have anything in, at all in mind, uh, do put it in the chat. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, gentlemen, let me uh, let me let me get to this list of questions that we do have. Uh, and maybe Richard, let's start with you. You were just talking about uh, Creatio itself and and the local pl platform uh, that that we offer. Um, there's a question here about um, about us and and our competitors, um, and the question is. How is Creatio different from other vendors? Um, are CRM solutions from companies like Salesforce or Microsoft um, different and 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 don't and they're not really low code? Um, uh, let's talk about that a little bit. You know, in terms of the local capabilities, especially, and and how do we compare to to these other vendors? Because of course, uh, there's lots of CRM vendors out there, um, but but how do they? You know, how do they differ? Do they do they also have similar capabilities to what to what Creatio does? Yeah, sure. I mean, don't get me wrong. Some of the other competitors you've mentioned, uh, uh, Lucian, of course, they're also uh, very good in their own domains. But as you said, we are doing things a little bit differently here at Creatio. One of the key differences is our kind of roots uh, are very much come from business process automation. And in actual fact, before Creatio uh, was actually named, we were actually called BPM Online. We actually renamed last year back in October. And the business process automation within the Creatio platform it is very powerful in comparison to some of it, some of those competitors. We provide a lot more flexibility and again around that kind of dynamic case management and not just this as well. When we start looking at interfacing and integrations, the, the case management and the business process automation can very, very quickly interact with API interfacing, pulling data from other third party applications and using that as part of the business flow. Not only does it provide a little bit more flexibility and capability within the solution itself, um, the front end and the usability and the user experience, we feel it uh, also has the edge over our competitors. So many of the competitor solutions are using more than one application. Uh, and so it gets a little bit clunky in terms of the user interface. And it also becomes a little bit less seamless compared to Creatio because we've got a single user interface you kind of drop into the low code element very, very seamlessly from that user interface if you've got the correct role based security permissions to do so, of course, uh, and then be able to manipulate the application. So it really brings about more flexibility from a business process automation. 
It allows you to manipulate the platform a lot easier. So our low code technology uh, approach. And the reason why that's the case, Lucian, is that the, the whole system is built on Studio. So it's not an afterthought that, like some of the other solutions whereby they've kind of added a low code technology part to their solution. Uh, everything we do is built upon the low code system. So what that means is, is that there's very few parts of the Creatio system, uh, probably less than 1% that can't be modified and manipulated and changed using the low code technology. Uh, and then a, a final element to the answer to this question is really providing that unified CRM as well. So everything we do, it's a single interface, the users very quickly become familiar with using some of our modules, whether that be sales, service and marketing uh, or any other modules that they create on the system. Because what we see on some of our competitors is that some of those interfaces, they're, they're, they're not quite as seamless uh, and they're a little bit more Frankenstein compared to what we provide. Fantastic. Thank, thank you, Richard. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a great answer. I'll open this up a little bit uh, more and, and, and to David yourself as well. Uh, you know, let's let's stick to this topic just a little bit more. Um, in terms of, you know, low code and CRM, uh, imagine you have a low code platform. Theoretically, you could build any app um, that, that you like. Um, why not why not build your own CRM uh, you know if you have a local platform uh, instead of uh, theoretically paying for it that's you know that's a question that is on one hand I think it's um, it, it, it the answer kind of speaks for itself because obviously probably you have you know this, this CRM application is quite complex you know there's lots of applications you can build that are more simpler but a CRM application seems seems very complex so that's probably where the answer would lead us to but what what do you guys um, think and and maybe Davey, you tell us from your own experience uh, in, in terms of uh, working with different types of companies and and their need for 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 both, you know, a, a capability to do things with low code, but also have capability of CRM. Uh, do, do you think that the combination of the two um, is where the value really is? Um, tell us a little bit more about what what you've learned from from your experience uh, dealing with those different types of companies. Mm -hmm. I think, especially if I look at uh, the Dutch market even more than the international market, uh, as we have both, is that Dutch people are more focused on being independent. So that means if we want to have a new CRM system, we've got to Google and then we're going to do some research ourselves uh, and then we're going to see which, uh, which software fits the best to our needs. And I think low code is a big thing because most companies know exactly what they want. They know what they want to do. And I want to do it myself. That, that's a big thing of the of the independent part. So if we allow customers to set up their own environments, um, building their own business rules, creating their own workflows, adjusting it, creating their own processes, I see that for us, that gives them a huge advantage. And not only for Gusmo, but also for us, uh, because just because Creatio is that easy, if we look at the other CRM systems that we, we sold and still supporting, is that for Creatio, we have almost, we have questions about huh, um, um, what can I build? Can I build this? Can I build this? Um, yes, um, so we usually explain how things work, but if we look support wise, we have a lot less work with Creatio because it's that easy and the customer can do so much themselves. So low code, uh, especially in the Dutch market, and I think for everyone is a huge, huge advantage. Thank you, uh, Davy And uh, Richard, uh, a comment here, what do you think? Would you agree? Yes, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, it's it's changing the world and, and how we think about software. So it becomes an absolute non-brainer from, from my perspective. Awesome. Uh, we we do um, have uh, a couple questions about the the cases, um, Davy. Um, why don't you tell us that just a bit a bit more, maybe about uh, specifically the the retail um, case? And and the question is for retail, what are the uh, you know pro, pro, uh, the special variations of of implementations in this industry? So you know compared to some other ones, what are the specifics here that that you need to be considered and and you you had to consider um, with with the product and the uh, implementation? 
Yeah, I think if I look at industries in general, <clears throat> they all have a workflow. Um, and that doesn't really depend on what that workflow is in creation and the processes, because you can build that for every single industry. Um, if I look at retail, uh, especially at the Bay Curve, um, I wouldn't say it's really complex because you have that with, with, with every project, like the data and, and processes. But especially in this case, there were some fun new challenges, like uh, how to create discount vouchers. Um, we haven't done that before, so it's very fun to do the research and come up with the best solutions for the customer. Um, we also always try to, well, COVID makes it a bit difficult. We, we normally work on site with our customers uh, in the region, um, and that helps you to get uh, quick access to data and, and, and the solutions together with your customers. So it, uh, retail is the same. I think it's fun because you have the whole package. The, the sales, the marketing, the service desk, um, and, and everything that comes with it. So uh, complex, I would say no, but that's maybe just us. Sure. Uh, awesome. Thank you for that. We do we do have some questions in the chat. Um, I'll, I'll, let's try this one. The question is, do, do you have an example of contractor type of companies using your solution? Uh, you know, contractors can mean several different things, but let's mm -hmm. let's take it in, in two different ways. One, a contractor meaning a small business. Right. So let's say an, an individual uh, mechanic or, or, or just a very small business that a, a tradesman yeah. uh, type of business. You know, does it make sense to to still do something like a local solution or local CRM if you if you are a 10 people organization at that and most of it is in the field um, and and Richard Davy both of you what's your take on you know the size uh, versus uh, practicability of of a local CRM sure I, I'll take this one first Davy so kind of I think it becomes even more important for small organizations to be to be thinking about a, a low code technology platform because first of all when you're a smaller organization, there's less resource to invest in, obviously, IT systems and, uh, and things like uh, IT technology platforms to help your business. Uh, and so if you have less resource, then the last thing you want is uh, a CRM technology platform that's taking up loads of time, not only in the implementation, but also the maintenance of that platform. So I think it, it only enhances the, the, the kind of requirement to make sure that you're efficiently uh, using a CRM tool like Creation. Yeah, I, I agree. I think uh, with because of the low code, also cost-wise, um, if, if you look, you get all the function of every every big CRM. You get all the functions you need. Um, if you're a small business, you often have very specific needs, so you can easily implement that with low code. Um, so that means it, it's quick, easy, and 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 cheap. So I think it's uh, we have a small uh, we have a few smaller customers, indeed up to two to five users. I would say that that is small. Um, yeah, they love in Creatio because they can do the work themselves. So you'll save a lot of money with this. Thank you for that. Um, and kind of uh, a, 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 a another question that is that is quite different, but and it's quite specific. Uh, but this one is about integrations uh, of of Creatio, um, specifically with other solutions such as Zoho. Um, is can can Creatio be integrated with Zoho? Is it conflicting with a solution like that? Um, Richard, would you would you um, would you have an insight on that? Sure. I mean, I'll probably answer the question a little bit more generically, uh, Lucian, because one of the beauties about using the the low code technology is that we we provide open API interfacing from the system that allows for a whole raft of integrations. So as I mentioned earlier, we've got the marketplace uh, with, with a whole portfolio of different adapters and integration tools that can interface to other CRM software, Zoho, uh, all sorts of third party uh, kind of best of breed applications. And they're ready to go plug and play uh, that can be utilized uh, very, very easily uh, from the marketplace. But in addition to this, the solution does provide that flexibility so that, that, that there's pretty much nothing that we can't interface as long as the other application is also friendly and talks back to us. 
Fantastic. Thank you for that. Uh, and maybe let's take this one as the last question um, uh, for the session. Um, and, and this one more for you, Davey. Uh, this is about um, the, the tools and, and way of collaboration that, that you had with all these customers and, and across these different projects. Um, what methods did you use uh, in terms of project management to, coll to collaborate with your customers? You know, what, what are the, the best practices that, that you could give us in terms of, uh, you know, working with these organizations on implementing Implementing a local CRM solution. Yeah, I, I think uh, especially for Creatio uh, with the low code because it's so easy and quick to implement. Um, we always uh, use uh, Jira online platform project tools for Agile Scrum. So we, for every Creatio project, we we run an Agile Scrum method um, to define the project details, prioritizing the work, and estimate the work. This gives us personally use advantage because you can work directly with the customer. Um, customer always has insight in the changes, the challenges, you have the discussion in the platform and you can respond very quickly. So in, in sprints of one, two weeks, you can build a whole new function environment in Creatio. And where with other systems, it may take you like half a year in Creatio, like probably half or less the time. Well, that's a that's a great thing to say to uh, to close the session and give us such a such a positive uh, review effectively. Uh, so so really appreciate it. Um, and and we we I think at this point you know we we will close the session uh, and give our audience a little bit time spare uh, till the end of the hour. Uh, we really appreciate everyone's time and, and participation. Uh, a great session, as I mentioned in the beginning, we, we, have, we will have a recording for you available, and this recording will be available on the Creatio YouTube channel, uh, and we'll also share a link with all of the re registrants. Um, in the meantime, also please check our website for other upcoming sessions and webinars, um, and also be sure to, to have a look at the Global Accelerate event uh, that we have coming up on October 28th, uh, we'd love for you to register and participate, uh, so please check it out, uh, the, the registration page on the Creatio website. Uh, with that, uh, gentlemen, I wanted to thank you uh, for for your great presentations and, and being with us today. Uh, I hope we can get together again pretty soon and then have another uh, fantastic discussion. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, very much. thank you much, everybody. Till next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.